Until I get into the seat of trust, my understanding cannot lead me, it will confuse me. Until I get to the point, trust in the Lord with all your heart. I trust Him. I trust Him that He loves me. I trust Him that He died on a cross for my salvation. I trust Him that even in, if even in this world certain things don't work out the way I planned, prayed and asked, God is still in control. And at the end, God will settle the score. It will change at the end. And it's not the end yet. Even if somebody died, it's not the end. It might be the end for this person on this earth. It's not the end for this person. They're still alive. It's not the end. And so when I trust Him with all my heart, something happens. I am free to make my understanding a source of my support. And lean not on your understanding. The problem with many of us is that many of us are sitting on our understanding. If you're going to try to sit on your understanding, you are holding you. Nothing is holding you. You will get tired and then you will fall. If you trust with all your heart, His goodness, His love for you, His faithfulness, His presence, you will have the freedom to have your understanding enlightened. Enlightened with what? I want to just enlighten our understanding with the scripture today. Point number two. Four truths or a doctrine of suffering. Sin brought suffering, number one. God used suffering to bring salvation, number two. These are truths, these are facts. Number three, at the end, God will end all suffering. He will. All death, all pain, all rejection, all abuse. In fact, God not only is going to end the suffering, He will take away the dark by removing the night. It will always be day sun will never go down and will never rise. He will remove the need for sun, making himself the ultimate light. He will give us resurrected bodies. I'm not talking about the bodies when you were in a coma and you came back and you're still going to die. I'm talking about resurrected bodies where you will never ever get sick again. Where you will never ever get weak again. Where your back won't hurt, where your knees won't give out, where you won't have to take five, six vitamins every single day and watch your blood pressure. He will give you brand new bodies. No matter how healthy, healed, resurrected you get, my friend, it is appointed for a man to die. But He will end all of that one day. So that's the third truth about suffering. The fourth one is that God in this present age uses suffering to refine us. If we refuse it, to let it define us. He will use that to purify us. He will use that to still show His glory. If we refuse being offended, disappointed in God, and throw the towel. And we have to enlighten our understanding with the truth of God's Word. I love what Jesus came back from the, being raised from the dead. The scripture says that He enlightened the understanding of His disciples by explaining the scriptures. He pretty much went down and broke down the scriptures and said, Hey guys, this is how it's supposed to be. He was supposed to come and die. He was supposed to be crucified. You got it wrong. He wasn't supposed to come and reign. He was supposed to come and die. He expounded on the scriptures. The problem happens is when we take our theology from what we want to happen in our life, instead of from the truth the Bible reveals to us. The Bible reveals to us from the beginning, God never created death. He never created suffering and He never created sickness. He never created mental illness. He did not create accidents. And He did not create disappointing moments. He created the world perfectly. But sin entered and with sin came death. Then God went in. And how do I know that He loves me? Because He did not let sin run its final course. For God so loved the world. See, God's love for you is not that He answered your prayer or did not answer for you, uh, for your prayer. People say, well, God, if God loved me, why did He let my dad die? If God loved me, why did He let me born like this with my eyes? If God loved me, why is my child ill? If God loved me, why did He allow me to go through that heartbreak? If God loved me, why didn't He stop the abuser? If God loved me, why did my parents get divorced when I was two? And it threw my life into a spiral and I, I found myself making very unhealthy decisions. My friend, the proof of God's love is not in what happened in your family. Please, the proof of God's love is not what's happening in your body. The proof of God's love is not what's happening in your bank account. For God so loved the world. 
It does not say, and then He gave you a healthy body. The Bible doesn't say, for God so loved the world, then He gave you perfectly healthy children. For God so loved the world, He gave you a husband or a wife that was perfect for you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. The greatest thing, the most important thing that proves God's love for you is that He died for you. He died for your eternal salvation. He died that you will become new in Him. He died that you will be forgiven. He died that you will be justified. He died that you will be redeemed. He died that you will be loved. He died that you will be in His family. That is the proof He loves you. Somebody shout, He loves me. Come on, somebody drop that in the chat. He loves me. Somebody tell your neighbor, He loves you. He never stopped loving you. When you went through the valley of the shadow of death, He did not stop loving you. When you went through the furnace, He did not stop loving you. When your child died, He did not stop loving you. When your business collapsed, He did not stop loving you. Because the cross still remains. When your lungs on your kidneys or something else start hurting, He did not stop loving you. Somebody give God some praise right now because He did not stop loving you. He loves you so much. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's our time in this video. I don't believe you were inspired by it. Then give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to this channel for more great content like this. Remember to take responsibility on what you learned today. This video is proudly sponsored by our patrons. You too can support this channel by visiting our Patreon page. The link is in the video description below. I want to say a big thank you to all our patrons out there. I am Buddha's Jumesi from Wisdom for Dominion. Thank you for watching and see you in our next